What's up guys, it's Kaze here. With the Elimination Chamber officially behind us, we now have a few more matches added to WrestleMania, and it seems like it's all our major championship matches. But before I start, like and sub if you enjoy the content, please! So far confirmed, we have Roman Reigns vs. Cody Rhodes, EO Sky vs. Bayley, Seth Rollins vs. Drew McIntyre, and Rhea Ripley vs. Becky Lynch. Now this gives us a lot of answers, but it also leaves us with a lot of questions still. And just when you thought things couldn't get more chaotic, the grandson of a plumber calls out the biggest movie star in the world. Yes, Cody Rhodes challenges The Rock to a match. I want to wrestle you one on one anytime. Now I believe they're setting up for a tag team match between Cody and Seth and The Rock and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Rumor has it that The Rock really wants to be involved at WrestleMania. With this potentially being his first match in 10 plus years, it would benefit him greatly for it to be a tag team match. However, Cody mentioned that he did want to do this before WrestleMania. But until then, I am wide open. Hey, yo. So I noticed that they keep throwing in little swerves and jabs to keep us off track of what they're actually building towards. And this is leaving fans speculating like crazy. So in related news, we actually got Drew McIntyre winning the Elimination Chamber. This was a really good match, by the way. Everybody in there got to shine. I'm not a big fan on how AJ Styles attacked LA Knight in the chamber, just because the whole purpose of the chamber is that no one can get in, no one gets out. And it seems like a lot of people get in. But aside from that though, this is a really good match. Drew actually looks like he might win at WrestleMania. Aside from Roman, he's the biggest heel in the company. So I actually wasn't a big fan of Drew's first title reign. And I understand it was during the pandemic. That's not even why I don't like it. I was more so just not interested in any of the opponents he was going against. But with more stars around for him to feud with and he's showing a bit more personality, like his t-shirt trolling is hilarious. His CM Punk trolling is absolutely hilarious. And CM Punk's my favorite wrestler, but when something's good, it's good, you know? So it's possible he might win this thing. Also winning the Elimination Chamber was Becky Lynch. Now this was also a great match and I gotta say, Tiffany Stratton and Liv Morgan definitely MVPs of the match. They both brought the energy necessary for a 3 a.m. start time. Speaking of that, for me, this was a tough watch because I had work literally a few hours later, but this also had such a cool feeling to watch it and knowing like this is live, this is going on somewhere around the world. I kind of felt like that kid staying up late at night when I knew I shouldn't be just to watch the late night game. Now, aside from WrestleMania, all the PLEs that have been announced so far have been announced to be overseas. This means every premium live event, we're gonna have a crowd so excited just to have wrestling in their town, let alone a major show. They don't get that too often. So that's gonna be a big feeling for them. It's gonna be a different feeling for us. And I'm actually excited to see how it goes. I'm sure it's gonna be fun just because the crowds make it the best time, much like the crowd in Perth. So shout out to you guys. So this seemed like a pay-per-view where they wanted to really focus on the up and coming stars as well as the next stars to be pushed. That's why we got Braun Breaker on SmackDown and I'm super excited for that by the way. That's why we got Tiffany Stratton. That's why we got Tyler Baden, Pete Dunne putting on a clinic with the Judgment Day. And speaking of the Judgment Day, I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Damian Priest seems like someone that they really want to protect and push, but Money in the Bank is just a few months away so he's gonna have to cash that thing in soon like they've got their thing going on with truth and miz right now which is actually pretty cool and i'm sure that's gonna culminate at wrestlemania but after that there's still quite a few things that you can do with the judgment day they've kind of taken a back seat to cody and the rock and roman reigns and seth like if you remember they were running raw on a weekly basis like just a few months ago so i feel like they're taking a back seat now but after wrestlemania i feel like they may be a bit more important and speaking of the judgment day i want to bring up rhea ripley rhea is the biggest star in the women's division right now i understand there's becky lynch i understand there's bailey but right now rhea has the crown absolutely no doubt about it to be honest, the women's division looks like it's gonna have a bright future. I'm actually really excited to see what they do. Like lately, it seems like every time they do a major event 
on the women's side, they do something new that I haven't seen before, at least. So I'm really excited to see what else they do. But yeah, guys, that's it. I just wanted to do a quick recap of things that we can expect moving forward and also things to keep an eye on. Put your seatbelt back on. I saw you take it off. And until next time, keep it kaze.